everyone, John Henry here, SlingshotFutures.com. Welcome to the Daily Futures Market Outlook for tomorrow's trading. Tomorrow being the 24th of the month, that is 124.18. Uh, plenty of uh, movement, really, across the board. We had a lot of stuff going on today, and there's uh, there's quite a bit that we want to cover. Before we jump in, as always, make sure to swing on over to SlingshotFutures.com and click on the Join the Daily Outlook newsletter. That way you can sign up for our email list so you'll be notified every time one of these videos comes out. Along with that, in the newsletter itself, we talk about a bunch of stuff that we can't cover in the video because there's just not enough time. Everything from stocks, crypto, you name it. If something interesting is happening, it'll show up in that newsletter. And then along with that, make sure to sign up for our free three-day trial in the live trade room so you can sit down with us for a couple days and see what we're all about and get kind of a first-hand look and some hands-on experience with what we do every day. Now, jumping on in, the euro is kind of winding out exactly the way that we were looking for. We had that wedge that we were kind of looking at yesterday, the flat top sort of wedge coming across here, and we are now finally seeing a little bit of a breakout. The bulls did pause for a little while, ended up looking like they just wanted to trap on the low. You can see that little wick right there just dipped right underneath that bull candle that a lot of buyers probably bought under and probably had stops under. And it looks like more buyers use that as an opportunity to buy at a slightly better price. And we have now pushed all the way back up again. Primary objective still not completely met at those highs, but we are not far off anymore. It does still look like we're in a range scenario here. Pretty hard to ignore a potential range with a fake break low. And the likelihood here, now that we have a fake break low, is to measure this distance and then transpose it on the highs. And that's kind of the equidistant move that we're looking for. And it lines up pretty darn close to that previous swing high, give or take a couple ticks here or there. Overall, everything is still looking pretty good. We have a very strong bull move to the upside. Everything is looking good for the buyers. And we do have a potential of a larger upside objective. You know, right off the bat, the first thing that stands out is simply the fact that we've broken aggressively above that previous swing high. And the closest they've been able to come to retest that area was right here. Now, in a, in a sense that creates sort of a gap between the market movement. Normally when you have healthy market movement, you see the breakout, the swing pullback, breakout, swing pullback. It just kind of keeps coming and it usually pulls back to around those previous swings to maintain that healthiness. When it starts getting away from that, you start running into a situation that is very much more aggressive and that creates a scenario that could open up some larger objectives to the upside. Now, there are a couple different ways to measure that type of thing. Uh, first of all, one of the easiest ways to do it is just to measure the lowest point that they came towards that swing to the highest point of that swing that we were looking at and then just transpose that up on the top. That is the price objective towards the upside. So even though the euro right now has a major objective at retest in the highs, we could see a little bit more distance through that top to around 24,355. So that's kind of what we're looking for right now, 24,355. And you can just kind of zone it off like that. This is the area of big interest for the upside buyers to see if they can kind of get that continuation uh, to the upside. See if they can follow through with what they've already put into play uh, with quite a bit of bullishness. Over on gold, we have a good bit of continuation as well. Uh, once again, another wedge that is breaking out, and this is what we were looking for here. It's pretty much the exact same scenario as the euro. We have a nice little wedge. We broke out, they pulled back, and we're now bouncing. Uh, picture perfect. So everything is looking really good here. Primary objective on this is going to be back to the highs as well. And once again, using that same kind of sentiment, we have a situation that they broke way above those previous swings and they didn't even come close. So using that type of information, we might already be sitting on top of one of those areas. We could even use a major swing, something like this, uh, and that would be our measurement. Pop that up on the highs and you can see that we've already gone through that. Now we can utilize this as sort of a deviation type play where we measure it up twice. We've already hit that, right? And we'll measure it up again and do it a third time, right? So this is the third deviation up of that tor of that type of gapping. And you can see every single one of these levels has held so far. We had a big pullback here. They held it as resistance, as support, as support. We held it as resistance, resistance, a little bit of support. We're now breaking through it. So the third deviation up makes a lot of sense. And that's going to be the price objective for gold next up. So we're looking for the mark to rise to around 46.9 going into tomorrow's trading. And uh, we'll see if they can get up there or not. So as of right now, though, everything is looking pretty solid. We have a good wedge breakout, good continuation. We might be looking for maybe an ascending wedge of sorts. Uh, this could also just end up being a channel until we get a little more information. It's going to be tough to tell, but at least we know where the market is likely going to want to go. Game plan, really, if you're not, you know, if you didn't use that opportunity of a breakout pullback, then continuation beyond that might be maybe another quick snapback or a rising support channel buying in that area. But uh, those are about the only other opportunities aside from the one that's already presented itself back there. 
On crude oil, we have good continuation here as well. Uh, not much of a surprise, a nice little flag that is breaking out with continuation up. Uh, and with a flag measurement, you know, there are a couple things that we were talking about before that we could be looking for a sort of measured leg to the upside, which would lead to gargantuan targets higher. Uh, looking in more of the shorter term, if we zoom in a little bit closer, uh, really the one that stands out to me is just looking at this most recent spike up. Right, we have the spike up, that's where the flag formed, I'd be looking for continuation off of that. Now one of the easier ways to measure that is just to simply use the line tool, draw from the low to the high, and then just take that same line and mark it up right there. So that gives us an upside objective or a price target of around 66, 68, give or take a few here and there, uh, but that is the measured move objective off of that lift higher and the flag breakout. Now, a couple things that do stand out here, of course, on crude oil is simply the fact that when we did come back towards those highs, so what we were talking about before, remember that previous swing high and that failure? Well, that failure did set in. So even though we do have some major price objectives to the upside, we have a big brick wall in the way that the market is going to need to work through. So because of this sort of uh, brick wall that's been placed in front of the buyers, what I would prefer to see now, since we've already had that price objective to the upside meet, would be looking for another kind of sub pullback. That could be as shallow as around 64, well, I mean, the earliest I would say would be around 64.14, but you might be able to get it a little bit lower, noting that we have an open gap, right? They left this gap behind, and if the market can come back and kind of fill that gap in, that would be a nice little bouncing area as well. Uh, now, the only reason I'm talking about buying on a deeper pullback is because we've already reached those major price objectives and we're seeing resistance exactly as anticipated. So because of that, got to play it a little bit safe, wait for a better price to jump on in uh, in the event that you missed that opportunity to buy for the rally higher. On the S&P, uh, really good continuation once again. The S&P in, in the index markets really as a whole just continuing to rip higher. Uh, I, I'm still nervous like we were talking about yesterday. I'm still nervous uh, about this looking very top heavy right now. But it is not my job to call a top. It is my job to go along with the technicals. And the technicals are obviously all pointing straight north. Uh, so we're looking for upside, buy side only. And really the big thing that stands out here is this huge break off move without any correction, right? We haven't had any correction after that big breakout move. And what I would love to see is something like this, a quick little snap back to the moving average, kind of reclaim some of these previous swing highs, maybe even a retest of the previous wedge top as support, looking for that secondary bounce. All of that leads to an area of support everywhere from, well, really kind of the previous swing high at around 14 to 15, 28, 14 to 28, 15, that is, all the way up to around 28, 18. That zone is going to be a hot spot for buyers to jump on in and try to lead the market back up again. Uh, so this is the area that I'm going to be looking for if the market decides it wants to pull back. Now, again, keep in mind, we have had very little pullback at all. So I would still love to see a good 20, 30 percent pullback in the S&P. Uh, of course, a lot of people would probably call doomsday and a crash, but I think that's going to be considered healthy. This market is, unfortunately, technically speaking, very unhealthy to the upside with very little pullback, and that is a slight concern. So I'm still waiting for that bigger pullback, uh, waiting for the opportunity to buy a slightly better price. But for right now, I've just got to stick with the shallower pullbacks because everything is still pointing to the upside. So that's going to do it for the Futures Outlook for tomorrow. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to send me an email, jbrink at slingshotfutures.com. And like we always say, make a plan, trade a plan, follow those rules, and you'll be A-OK. -okay. Until next time, we'll see you all then.